Cassandra Parker is doing something very courageous. She's running a small business up in Prince George, British Columbia, selling firearms and hunting equipment. So when the government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau suddenly banned thousands of firearms from being legally owned by Canadians, it hit her and her family run small business hard. But she's not complaining about it. She's doing something about it. Cassandra Parker is taking the government of Justin Trudeau to court. She is pushing back against his firearms ban and the buyback program. When we here at the Canadian Taxpayers Federation read about Cassandra's fight, we knew that we wanted to take a stand right alongside of her in court. Why? Because we know that hundreds of millions of taxpayer dollars are going to be wasted on this buyback program and that it won't make Canadians any safer. So we put out the call. We started a petition and we sent out emails to our supporters asking for them to back us up and to help us hire a lawyer so we could take a stand in court. They answered that call. We've hired that lawyer. We're going to be taking a stand alongside of Cassandra in court. Because you know, it's hard enough to try to run a family small business here in Canada without the government interfering in this way. But this isn't about government policy. This is about Cassandra. She's quite something. So we drove up to Prince George to sit down and have a conversation with her. Here it is. So tell us about your shop here. How does your family fit into the firearms world? So I fit into the firearms world as a part of my family unit. So my husband has been a lifelong hunter. Um, he's enjoyed hunting in the Prince George area and fishing. And when I first met my husband a few years ago, I had a basic firearms knowledge. Um, my ex-husband had hunted. We had had firearms in our home growing up and we had always tried to eat as much wild game as we could. I mean, there's a lot of health benefits to that. And when we got together and we got married, we decided that we would expand the home-based business that we had already started and we kept building and building. And now it's just the storefront that we love and helps us incorporate firearms into our community. Uh, KKS Tactical Supplies has been our little niche market, right? It started with our binary exploding targets and then just kept expanding. And now we do hunting rifles and tactical shooting rifles and all the ammunition and the optics and all that kind of stuff. And we wanted the store to be a spot that other families like ours could come to take their children to get them into the sport, right? We've got five kids and it's a huge part of our life. Our entire year centers around hunting seasons and fishing seasons and it's something we love. You mentioned the seasons, the hunting seasons, and how it's just a, a part of your calendar of your life. So can you go over that a little bit for us? Uh, a lot of Canadians uh, can't relate to that, and I really want them to. How do you balance uh, hunting and fishing, and what does that look like on your family calendar? So um, if we're going to start in January, we start with ice fishing, obviously. And ice fishing is a huge, fun activity for our family. We have an interactive camera. My, my husband calls it interactive TV. <laughs> so we take the kids and we watch the fish and we get to jig. And it's a lot of fun. And it gets us out in the winter when it's cold. Up here in Prince George, it's not uncommon to be minus 32 before a wind chill. And you got to find activities to do still outside. Otherwise, you get stuck inside and the kids just go to screen time we all know <laughs> and then from there we end up in March typically so the, the ice will come off and we start getting prepared for spring bear um, and at that point there's still predator hunting going out throughout the fall uh, throughout the winter as well so predator hunting is a big part of sustainable hunting in our area especially when you're surrounded by ranch lands and uh, we have issues like the caribou management in our area and other things where uh, predator control like wolves and coyotes is really important so we try to focus a bit on that through those winter months as well and then for spring bear spring bear meat is one of our favorites um, we make a lot of jerky and pepperoni and it's, our kids could eat a whole package to themselves <laughs> And then from there, we uh, start river fishing. So we fish the Bowen River typically, and we start with trout and uh, keep going through the year. And eventually we have a spot that we get down so far we have to hike in. And it's a lot of fun. It's a, a great activity for our family. Come July, uh, when bear's over, we try to focus more into fishing again. So lake fishing, and we go sturgeon fishing down the lower mainland and all sorts of activities like that. And then we wait for fall. So mid-August bear season opens again and we start preparing, preparing for bear and rabbit uh, and then come September we go straight into our deer, our moose, elk if we're lucky. I mean it's always the goal. Yes. <laughs> our family doesn't hunt a lot of sheep 
uh, right now just because we've got young children. So taking that time and hiking everybody up the mountain can be a little bit of a challenge. Um, but most of our fall is a good 40 hours a week of trying to find a sustainable hunt. So moose and uh, mule deer and whitetail deer. It's insane in the shop. So this <laughs> last hunting season, we had a uh, bull moose draw in 7-Eleven. And my husband and I split up for the, the time where he could go hunting and I would take care of the shop. And then he'd drag his butt in here about noon and <laughs> we'd keep going every day right through the whole season. <laughs> Wild game is never recalled, right? No. We know that it was fed properly. We know that it's sustainable because we, we choose to hunt sustainably. We wouldn't poach anything. We make sure that we follow all the regulations and we only take animals that are ready to be harvested. So I'm a firearms owner myself. I'm a married mother of two. I grew up in rural Western Canada. And for us, it's just a part of your life. It's part of your culture. It's just like having a tool. For me, it's no different than owning a chainsaw or a quad or a pickup truck. It's, it's just really a normal, safe part of life. It's a way of life. Can you describe uh, for some of our fellow Canadians who may not be familiar with the firearms world here in Canada, what it is as far as safety goes? What sort of steps do you need to go through here at the shop and at home to keep things safe? When I went and got uh, my pal so that I could own a rifle or a shotgun, so my unrestricted, uh, I had to have a big background check. Uh, my spouse was spoken to. I had to have uh, references, people that were being Phoned. I had to go through a course and every single time I want to purchase a firearm or ammunition I have to show my pal. Can you describe uh, here at the shop uh, what sort of steps you go through to keep things safe? For sure. I mean, any Canadian who owns a position and acquisition license or a PAL needs to go through the firearm safety course. And then once they've completed that and passed the written exam and the practical exam by a licensed instructor, they need to submit that application to the RCMP, so the Canadian Firearms Office and they need to go through a full background check. So they want to know where you've lived over the last five years. They want to know if you've had any changes in spouses in the last two years. They want to have two references, so character references. They want a photo guarantor. There's a whole lot of things that go into this application on its own. And then on top of that, once you get your firearms license, you need it to go and purchase ammunition and firearms and other things too. But Primarily, those are the two things that most people are after. So when you go into a store like ours, we ask to see your PAL. We check it on the RCMP database. We make sure that it's valid. And if you're buying a non-restricted, then we have to match the person to that. It goes for the ammunition and the firearms. It's a lot, mm -hmm. right? And then in store, we have to store them properly, right? So everything is trigger locked. Everything is locked up at night. There is no access to customers off the street to just walk in and pick up a firearm without a license. It's no. not this willy nilly like, here, take a gun. That's not how this works. No. <laughs> so for us, on top of all those security measures, we have extra security measures just in the store. We run security cameras constantly. We have metal grates on the doors. We have anti-brake film in our windows. It's a whole thing that went into the security for these firearms. It's not something that we take lightly. So when you heard about Prime Minister Justin Trudeau's buyback program of firearms happening in the middle of this lockdown, what went through your mind? Well, May 1st was an interesting day for our family in general. Um, I had gone out and was doing my normal morning run and came back to my husband sitting on the couch and read this. And it was like being hit by a car. Like it was insane. It's a huge impact to my business and my daily life. This idea of a buyback program where the federal government is going to use my tax money and your tax money to purchase property that I have legally purchased. My family has invested as much money as we could into our business and time and energy and to have it just taken from under our feet by the stroke of a pen was completely disheartening. What would a firearms ban like this do to this place? What would it do to the shop? So for our business, it's a huge chunk of our monthly profits. And it was a huge chunk of inventory that we already paid for, right? It's not, if we had had it stolen from us, like if I had had a break in or there had been a fire, I'd have insurance to cover it. Yeah. 
But when the government takes it and then doesn't initiate a buyback program, even immediately, they just ask you to sit on that inventory. We're already all dealing with COVID-19 and the repercussions of shutting down businesses and people staying home and the economy slowing down. Now I'm sitting on inventory that I can't sell. I can't reinvest into my community. I can't reinvest into my family and I can't reinvest into my business. When it's not just what I'm sitting on, but it's what I would have already sold as well. So it's a good chunk of my business. Our, our name is KKS Tactical Supplies. Tactical isn't a scary thing, right? Tactical doesn't make something more lethal or dangerous. It's a look. It means that I can use the same firearm as my husband, who is six foot seven, right? I'm five five. I need an adjustable stock. I need to be able to adjust our firearms so that all members of my family, whether my five year old or my 15 year old, can use a firearm safely. I call it furniture. Yeah. A red couch isn't more dangerous or different than a blue couch. So you are helping to lead this fight against this firearms ban, against this buyback program in court. The Canadian Taxpayers Federation has joined forces alongside of you. We're fighting against this in court. We know this would be a huge waste of taxpayers' money. We need only look at the failed long gun registry. We wasted more than a billion dollars on that long gun registry for no good reason, so we don't want to go down that road again. Why are you fighting this in court? What does this mean to to you. So beyond the shop, this means my freedoms as a Canadian citizen. This isn't just about an object, a firearm. A firearm is a tool, right? It's no different than my chainsaw or my quad if I'm out hunting and I need something to help me. But when you start taking property away from Canadians without a conversation, uh, without a discussion in Parliament, it means that you can do that with other things. It means I don't know in the future what kind of world my Canadian children will be living in, right? At what point can the government take other freedoms away from my family? Is there anything that I haven't asked you yet that you want fellow Canadians to understand about your shop here and about your way of life when it comes to hunting and firearms? I think it's just important that we all stay calm and we have these conversations with our neighbours and our friends and our family members, sorry, and that we talk about what does it mean to be a firearms owner? What does it mean to you to be a firearms owner? It's not this free-for-all, shoot-everything kind of mentality. That's not what we're about in Canada. It's about hunting. It's about target shooting. It's about competitions. And it's about family businesses like ours, where we've invested everything we can into a place that other families can bring their children in and they can continue traditions that have been Canadian tr traditions for hundreds of years. If you want to help us take a stand alongside of Cassandra Parker in court, pushing back against this firearms ban and the buyback program, that's great. Please go to our website, taxpayer.com. That's where you can stand up and be heard.